All right, let's summarize what we discussed in the previous video. Okay, and uh, we're looking at here how the abundance of factor or productive resources affects the production of the two goods. Okay, now specifically, we're saying that here um, home gets additional units of labor. Okay. And um, this could be, you know, a wave of refugees or immigrants, okay, flowing into the country here. And we're seeing that because there's an increase in labor force, uh, which is a very important, um, could argue it's the most important uh, productive resource. So uh, we need to shift uh, the PPF upward. In other words, there's an increase in productive capability of this economy. Uh, other than that, we also see a movement along the PPF. Which direction the movement should go? It depends. Okay. So um, in our case, we said that you know because the cloth is labor intensive. So when we increase the labor, then of course the movement should go towards uh, the cloth axis, okay? The quant, the output of cloth axis. Um, if let's see, in a different case, um, you know, in um, there's a let's see, a increase in capital, okay? And of course we would say that uh, the movement should go towards um, the food axis because we assume that food uh, production is uh, capital intensive, right? And here the economic induction is very straightforward uh, because cloth is assumed to be labor intensive. So when we have more labor, of course, uh, cloth industry tends to expand or expand um, more uh, in, in a larger scale okay? because they can take advantage of these uh, inflow of refugees or immigrants. Okay? So they will expand more. All right? And of course on the PPF we're going to see that you know um, a movement towards the output of that good, okay, and uh, here that's cloth, okay. So the basic conclusion is a rise in the labor to capital ratio leads to a rise in um, the output of cloth to output of food, okay. Once again, bear in mind uh, this conclusion is built upon the assumption that cloth is labor intensive, okay. Um, if we, you know, change that assumption and said uh, cloth is uh, capital intensive, then the conclusion would be different. Okay, I will leave that um, as a kind of assignment for you guys to, um, you know, come up with your conclusion. Okay. All right. So here, the general conclusion would be uh, an economy will have a relatively higher supply of the goods that are intensive in the factor um, which the country is relatively better endowed. Okay? Of course, here a higher supply of the goods in this example would be cost and the intensive in the factor would be labor. Okay? Uh, simply speaking, what we learn is the production is determined by resource endowment. So uh, the country tends to produce more of the products um, uh, which uses uh, the uh, better endowed factor more. Okay. And um, the next thing we're going to look at is how the abundance of factors or productive resources affects the distribution of income. Okay. And um, after we understand its influence upon the um, uh, goods, right, the two goods, then here it should be uh, relatively easy to understand the distribution of, of income. Okay? And um, 
we're going to see that, you know, because of the inflow of refugee or immigrants, then L over K rises, right? Uh, both marginal product of labor in cloth uh, and marginal product of labor in food fall due to law of diminishing returns, okay? Or you could say diminishing returns to labor in this case, okay? So in cloth and food production, we find that, you know, um, they use more labor to replace capital. So um, labor becomes less and less productive. Okay. And that's why we know for sure these two marginal products uh, would decrease. Okay. And um, we also learned that the marginal product of labor um, equals the real wage, right? So it's W over PC for cloth uh, factor in W over PF for food uh, sector, right? So we find that workers are going to be worse off, okay? So uh, regardless of cloth or food they purchase with their wage, they're going to purchase fewer units of cloth or food or a combination of these two, okay, for a given nominal wage. So they are uh, certainly worse off, okay. Now, we find that uh, both MPK, marginal product of capital in cloth, and marginal product of capital in food would rise. Why? Be simply because, you know, when we have more labor, and then we're going to see that, you know, in front of each machinery equipment or um, tools, we see more workers, okay? So the machinery equipment and tools themselves becomes more productive, right? And of course, the real rental price would go up, okay? And it go up relative to, you know, the price of cloth and the price of food. Okay, so the capital owners are better off, no doubt. Okay, now here the basic conclusion would be when a factor uh, that the economy is abandoned rises, the owners of that factor are worse off, and the owners of other factors are better off. Okay, again, because it's already abandoned, now we get more of course, you know, um, that factor would f become further um, less productive, okay? So um, the welfare or um, the, um, yeah, the welfare of that, um, uh, of the owners of that factor would definitely be uh, worse off, okay? All right, so this is uh, uh, how the, uh, the abundance of factors affects uh, the distribution of income. Okay. All right. So up to this point, we um, finish our discussion about the HO model, the Heckscher only model, uh, by just looking at the domestic economy. Okay. In the next video, we're going to add international trade to our HO model okay, and see how um, the trade affects um, different variables, okay, uh, including output. Uh, relative uh, price and uh, also the distribution of income. All right.